Hi, friends! Welcome to my little home. Um, don't mind me, I'm just tidying some things up a bit to make it more cozy here. But that can wait. There's so many exciting things I want to share with you. I was finally able to settle down here in Waterdeep for the time being. From what I've heard, Waterdeep is full of guilds, and one of them is bound to have the stuff I'm looking for. As soon as I can, I think I'll join a protection guild to start earning some money. Those are pretty easy to get into, right? I know I don't seem like the type, but if you can't tell already, my place is a little too barren. I need food and art supplies and maybe a familiar or two. But most importantly, I need to be able to afford this place. So hopefully next time you see me, I'll have more stuff and we'll have made a whole group of friends. Of course, I don't plan on staying for too long. My ultimate goal is never winter. From what I've heard, it's the city of craftsmen. And what better place to get my wings than there? But until I get there for the time being, take a look at this video on how I draw my arms and I'll update you when I find something worth updating you with. See you in a bit. Uh, oh, um, sorry. Uh, when I draw arms, <laughs> I like to follow a little rule set so I don't get lost. Even if I'm doing some non-standard arms, they all follow the same rule set in my opinion. First step is lines, then a set I call mims. It means make it make sense. We'll get into that later. Then shape and then detail. Using basic lines to determine where your arm is going is obviously the cornerstone of drawing arms, but it's not just about knowing where your arm is going. Your arm has three joints in it, the shoulder, elbow, and wrist, and each joint gets smaller as it goes down the arm. This is very important for when you draw your characters. Whether you're exaggerating their features or not, you don't want the wrist to be larger than the shoulder joint or else it'll look weird. Cartoonish differences and caricatures are things that we'll get into later in the video, where those rules don't really apply. But for this section, we're mainly just going over human features. When drawing your arm, keep in mind that if you're drawing your character in a position that gives them a lot of depth, foreshadowing is more likely than not going to be employed in your drawing. This means that when you draw, you're going to want to make things look like they're getting closer or further away. You can make it look like someone's getting ready to throw a punch or reaching out to something, but the line's mechanics are going to be the same. The further away from your eye the joint will be, the smaller that circle is going to be. And the closer the joint is to the viewer, the bigger the circle will be. When I draw my arms, I like to solidify what the skeleton of the arm is going to look like first, and then move forward, which is why my time-lapse videos are honestly so heavy on the line art portion because this is the process I use to make sure my arms are in the right position before I start working. And that goes for every part of the body, too. The next step is MIMS, or make it make sense. This part is where I make sure that the arm is going in the direction that I need it to go in. So I create a sort of exoskeleton of rings around the arm to make sure that the direction the arm is facing makes sense. The biggest thing is that the arm at the elbow will always have a directional changing point unless the arm is completely straight. You can see it especially in this arm where there is foreshortening. The direction of the upper arm and the direction of the lower arm are drastically different. Now this isn't just about drawing rings around the arm, it's about making sure your directions make sense. So you can't just draw circles randomly, there has to be a method to it. And hey, if you'd be better off not doing it, don't worry, you don't have to. It's just my thing. Then we have shape. This is where you break down the basic components of each part of the arm, not worrying about overlap, 
Just understanding where the upper arm goes and when the lower arm goes and making sure they look good together. Another important thing is understanding that your arm is made of things and will move when pushed. When you draw your arms flexing or being pushed up against something, you have to draw that displaced skin and muscle and fat. It's what makes your character more believable. When practicing, it's also important to have two arms that interact with each other, because all of your characters can't be one-armed rogues with a sad backstory. You have to learn how to draw arms that move with each other in the same space. Last, well not really last, we have detail, where you connect the shapes and add your details, hence the title, Details. You can add your areas for shading here or notable features to include. Depending on your painting style, they can be as many line art details as you want or as little as you want. I usually put most of my details in my line art because I rely heavily on my line art to show that detail. Other artists don't and they don't have to because each one looks great, it's just about what you want. Learning how to draw arms that interact with each other is not as hard as you might think. Learning human body perspective is another video that I'll be covering, but when you're just practicing, you don't have to draw the body. You can honestly practice drawing arms with little geodudes or something like that. The most important thing is making their interactions believable. But once you have this method down, arms should be a piece of cake for you. Before I end this though, I want to go over some outliers of arm drawing. When drawing characters in general, you have the choice to draw them very stylized or realistic. When drawing stylized arms, you don't generally follow an anatomical code. Some arms can be blocky and sharp and are generally used in action cartoons. First off my mind is uh, Samurai Jack, whereas some can be noodle-like and bendy, which is a style often used in comedy cartoons like Adventure Time. Usually the style is really indicative of the overall theme of the drawing or animation. Then there's the anime drawing style, thin, ethereal looking, um, and in my opinion, uh, I've never been good at replicating it, so I'm just gonna not go there. And then you have realistic, which we've all seen, whether in comic books or renaissance art, both methods of drawing can turn into amazing things. You just need to know when to use them and how to make it look its best after the line art phase. These guidelines are just the basics when it comes to drawing arms. You can always make different shapes, whether they're larger or smaller, furry, mechanical, or grotesque. Following a set of rules when drawing arms will never fail you. In my opinion, the most important steps are lines and shapes, because using lines to determine your direction and then creating the shape that follows those lines is paramount. What follows after is pretty simple. Now to recap, because I know that was a lot. In the first step, you draw the skeleton of the character with the shoulder, elbow, and wrist joints being depicted by circles that get smaller as they go along. The bigger the respective circle gets, the closer it will seem to the viewer. The smaller it gets, the further away it seems to the viewer. Using the MIMS method is optional, but it helps you make sure that your arm is going in the right direction, especially after the elbow. 
Shaping your arms and detailing your arms are simple once you got the framework down, so don't be afraid to just draw stick people once in a while. That's it for my little tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And I can't wait to see you in the next video where the party search continues. I didn't have much luck today, but I'm sure I'll find a group of folks to take me in. Heck, I might even start going in on my own. That'll be fun to see. <laughs> But I'll let you know how my hunt goes next time I see you. Bye!